Good morning guys, today I am vlogging. That might be obvious for the fact that I have, um, oh my god. My kitchen's a joke. We went shopping yesterday and we went somewhere new. We went to Morrison's because I'm like, we spend way too much money on food um, and we need to be better with our money. So we went to Morrison's um, and there's a little open near us soon. I'm gonna go there. But I got literally three times, I'm not even joking, three times the amount of food that I get when we go to Waitrose. And I know Waitrose is nice and it's super expensive, and we know this, but I didn't realize quite how expensive. Um, it's super close to us, but Morrison's literally an extra two minutes down the road, so that's gonna be a new go. Hence why my kitchen, Rose is gonna hate me for showing you this. And this is my fault. All the rice cakes, greens powder, last night's, yeah, I've, I've, I've got some tidying up to do and I've got to feed the cats. Um, lots I want to talk about today, um, especially a reoccurring theme I keep getting questions about is why people can't lose calories, sorry, lose fat, even though their calories are very low. And it's something really important that we need to glaze over really quickly just to help you guys out. Just let me tidy up the kitchen, uh, feed the cats, have a quick bit of food, make a coffee, I'll be right back with you. So for probably the past, Honestly, six months, at least, maybe more, I've dropped the ball with my food. My food has not been as good as it used to be, which inherently, inherently has helped me kind of put on weight because uh, whereas before I might have eaten a lot more veggies and filled myself up on that, I've kind of had less of that and more foods that might not typically be what you think is healthy for you. Um, so I need to sort that out. So, Another reason for going to Morrison's is I can buy better foods or I can just buy more of them. I can buy for, for cheaper. That's the, I'm saving money. I'm not going to try and get around it any other way. That's what I'm doing. So I can uh, get more veggie and I can buy tons of beans and stuff like that. Make chilies up. Uh, last night I made a chicken curry which was so easy. Just chop, put some oil in a pan, chopped up some onions, chopped up some chicken breast, chucked it in there, added the Rogue and Joss spices, uh, then added tin tomatoes, boiled off some rice. Boom, straight away, like a healthy curry. Um, so I need to start taking care of that a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna have a coffee in a moment and then we're gonna talk all things nutrition. Because I didn't put the last video up, you guys probably don't know what happened to Stevie. So those, you, you probably saw the last video or a while back where we rescued a, um, a blind hedgehog to live in our garden from an animal sanctuary. Someone came around to drop over flowers and they left the side gate open um, and he got out. This is about four days ago. We've been up till about one o'clock most nights looking for him, putting leaflets out. And we've had a lot of people message us saying that they've found hedgehogs. Uh, so there's a couple in our back garden at the moment which we need to take to the sanctuary because apparently they're endangered. So they can do their stuff, you know, make business and make more babies uh, and all that good stuff, all the fun stuff. Uh, but a friend of ours, who lives around the corner called us up and he said, boys, uh, John Rose, there's a hedgehog in my house on my stairs. So like, how have you got it in your house and on your stairs? Like, yeah, in my house, on my stairs. Sure enough, went round and there was a hedgehog curled up on his stairs. Beautiful little hedgehog, but not our Stevie. So the search continues. Hey baby, good morning. So this little monkey, it's cost me a lot of money this month, hence why I'm trying to be better with my money. She had a little skin problem, we took her to the vets, um, and it was a lot of money, she's been like three or four times. So I'm gonna try and claim that back on insurance. But you know what it's like, sometimes each month you have something that comes out that you just didn't allow for, and then you're like, ah, oh, batten down the hatches, uh, and you wanna start pawning things and selling everything, sell you, because you cost me a lot of money, Luna. I would never sell her, I love her. Not as much as she loves my coffee, though. That's not yours, is it, darling? You can't have that, your heart will explode. Today I'm just tying up loose ends or trying to get them tied up. So we got an email from the company who's looking after our training plan. That's all you're seeing. That's all you're seeing. There's a hard and a digital copy. Um, uh, and we were like, yeah, we're ready to go. We just, and then I just found there was a few little problems, not just with the app, because there was just some typos in the app, but a couple of little mistakes in the plan that either us or the designer had missed in terms of like light exercises which might need a higher rep amount. And it was set at five reps. And I was like, well, that's not right. Uh, and there's just a couple of things. So I've just emailed the graphic designer and say, look, can we change these? But I know that he's just had a baby. So I don't know if that's doable. So can I change it myself? It's a PDF, I don't know. But I want these out, man. But it won't be long, it won't be long. Um, on the talk of babies, if you follow us on Instagram, 
thank you. If you don't, what the hell are you playing at? Lean Machine's official. If you follow us on there, you would have seen some incredibly exciting announcement from Leon and Carly. Leon and Carly are going to be in a mum and a dad. They're having a baby, which is makes me very happy, as you can see. Um, so they're over in Maldives at the moment, having like the best time. Um, but I'm very, 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 very happy for those guys. It's very exciting. I spent the last couple of hours fixing that plan and just making little adjustments that I wanted done. I managed to find a kind of an app that allowed you to edit PDFs, so that's cool. Uh, so that will get sent over to the computer guys to sort that for the app and everything. Uh, and I'm looking for a pre-workout. I like this one from Awesome, but I want something with a little bit of caffeine in it today. So it might be one of the few times that I actually go to the shop and buy like some energy drink, which I never really do. I haven't actually trained for about two to three days, just taking some time off. Uh, so I'm gonna go squat in a minute. So I wanna get the old caffeine going and I can be drinking that while I'm warming up. So uh, I'm gonna go and grab one then. I'll be right back. If you ever want to experience the definition of pain, barbell therapy. I think I've told you guys quite a few times, I'm having a bit of pain behind my knee at the moment. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. I can get pain free if I do a little bit of releasing off before. So I spent a little time on this leg. This VMO is incredibly tight. And to the point where I'm not far off crying when I barbell therapy this. So I'll start on the outside, I'll do the top of the quad that's tight. When I come over to this VMO, watch my world collapse. But this is a great thing to do. Uh, barbell therapy, awesome for you want to get up in the hammies, uh, especially if you put it on a rack about kind of just below hip height, you can roll through and straighten out a leg. Uh, but very, very, very good for releasing enough quads because the weight of the barbell alone is enough to really kind of just get into it. Um, I'll see you in a few minutes. This is gonna hurt some. You bastard! Ah! That's enough, that's enough, that's enough for that. <laughs> okay, going for 140 for three, that will be a PB. My one RM is 150. So we're going for it here. This is a 10 kilo jump as well. And I've got to watch this right knee because it always likes to kick in. Um, yeah, wish me luck. Yep, that's not happening. I'm just going to wrap up with some Romanian deadlifts, get those hamstrings working a bit. Uh, and then later, I'm training with Matt his. I believe he wants to do some work from blocks. Hopefully nothing too leggy, because uh, mine are pretty weak today. Uh, so, Romanian deadlifts, let's do it. One of the problems I see people have with Romanian deadlifts is they feel like the bar's got to touch the floor. To really work the hamstrings, you want to get them nice and stretched, so you haven't. What you've got to do is keep a lovely flat back, almost concave a slightly, and push your hips back to the wall. That will lengthen the hamstrings more, and it means you won't have to go anywhere near as low. Like, I, I don't think anyone really needs to go past halfway down their shin at max. If they're, if they're getting lower than that, they're probably losing their back and they're probably not stretching their hamstrings as much as they can. So just unlock the legs a little bit, straighten them just a smidge, and really push that ass back to the back wall, and your hamstrings will get the stretch that they need. We're expected to miss out through concussion and a knee injury respectively, but both start. Here are replaces ever about it right back. So a few of you guys very nicely commented on our last video that I look like I put on some size. That has been my goal and what I've been trying to do. So I do appreciate those comments, thank you very much. I thought I'd show you where I'm at. I am, what am I? Four and a bit kilos heavier than I was during the Open in April. So roughly about a quarter of a pound a week I've put on, give or take, that changes with how much I eat, obviously. Um, so it's glycogen levels, water and all that crap. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I have quite blocky abs, so they're gonna stay anyway. Um, but this is where I'm at. This is me currently, at 84 kilos. Uh, goal is 90. I'd like to be 90. It does take years to do that, I'm being realistic. But 90 and leaner than this, that's like several years away. At the moment, where I've noticed where I put on most of my body fat is obviously here. And these little guys on the side here. Um, but, guess what you have to do? You appreciate your body fat's gonna go up when you go on a, on a bulk or try and put on thingy but, uh, weight. But the idea is to do it slowly and steadily so that 
you don't gain unwanted fat because and no less muscle. So I could I could eat an extra thousand calories a week, put on weight super fast, but I wouldn't gain any more muscle than how I'm doing it at the moment. But I would gain the extra fat, and all it does is take me further away from my ultimate goal and makes me unhappy because I don't like the way I look in the mirror because um, I like being quite lean. Um, and while I'm here, I'll talk about the thing that I wanted to with calories. So a lot of comments I get and a lot of questions I get asked, especially on Instagram lives that I do a lot, is uh, I'm on low calories and my PT says that I have to increase my calories to lose weight. How is this? Basically, real simply, your body has sticking points. It will get to a certain point in calories and it will kind of adjust to where it is. And you need to take more calories away or do more exercise or a bit of both to create a larger deficit to keep fat loss going. Because the body's a mega, it will just, it will just kind of... It will, it will find where it's happy and it will basically adjust. So things that happen when you're on very low calories is you stop doing just like random fidgets. Like when I eat a lot of food, you'll see me just tap my legs, fidget in. That's my body just kind of freely burning calories. When you're very low on calories, you'll see, you'll just stare into space and zone out. Your body's just kind of slowing all of its processes down. And when you get very close to your BMR, which is your base metabolic rate, which is the amount of calories you need to do nothing but just for your body to function and do all the important stuff it needs. It's about 60% of your total calories. Um, if you get near that, you start coming into trouble. So if people come to me and they're on very, very low calories, I have to say, I cannot diet you from here. We have to slowly build your calories up, trying to gain minimal to no body fat, so do it very slowly to allow the metabolism to adjust, because it will. And then once we get to a position where we've got enough calories and we're in a healthy position, then we can start to take calories away with our new faster metabolism and lose weight from that point. If you're on zero calories, you can't go anywhere. So whenever I diet people, I want them to be dieting, doing the minimum amount of extra effort other than the training that upset them and eating as many calories as possible because then once we hit our first sticking point we have a choice we've got loads of calories we can juice some of them or we can increase our training or we can do a bit of both and then we can do three or four different sticking points and still be on a decent amount of calories at the end then once we've hit our goal weight which is comfortable for us and where we look like the way we look we then try again and we slowly increase calories very slowly to see what we can get away with because the more calories we can eat the easier life is for us so if our metabolism is running lovely and fast and we're eating an extra 500 calories, but we still look the same as we did when we finished our diet, then brilliant. Understand, this is general, normal people's diet. This is not competition diet. Those people that get that super lean, you're never gonna stay in that, that condition without steroids and stuff like that, because it's just too low and the calories are too low, uh, and it's just not natural for the body. The body wants to hold a certain amount of body fat just for safety and survival reasons. Hope that's clear. Right, let's go and get some grubbing. Food after training, I'm just munching some chocolate rice cakes. I'm gonna have a protein shake and then I'm gonna make a curry, chicken, I'm gonna stick some broccoli in it, some onion, and then I'm gonna use like a curry spice packet. And then once that's all kind of fried off the chicken, it's all cooked through, I'm just gonna stick Greek yogurt in it and have it with some rice. And the Greek yogurt with the spices will make like a curry sauce. Pretty good calorie wise, really good food. I'm down, let's do it. That is how we do it. It's got some broccoli in there as well when that comes out. I just got a package come through the door from Ember. Boop. Uh, it's beef jerky. Uh, we were at Turf Games and they were there uh, and we tried it and it was nice and they just messaged me because I had a picture with them. Said, can we send you some? I was like, hell yes. Uh, I've just been carrying on with the same stuff we were doing this morning, speaking to the graphic designer. He wanted to make the changes I made uh, in case it changes the quality of the PDF and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and obviously it needs to be as good as it possibly can be. It needs to be perfect. Um, next stop, I'm going over to Matt's. Uh, I don't know what we're training. I think we're training off the blocks. And what surprised me is I obviously haven't been doing much hamstrings because those three sets of RDLs have lit my hamstrings up. Yeah. Yeah, how are you? Good, mate. Good. Why are you peeing? Uh, burnt from Turf Games. Uh, How's day been? Yeah, good, mate. There's a clock behind me. It's got 33 minutes on it. That's how long we've got to work through some block um, snatches, uh, block cleans. The idea of these is to get faster under the bar. Uh, I've already squatted today, so let's have some fun. Holiday training. I go, nice, Ugh. nice, uh. 
Let them do it. <laughs> Four seconds on the clock, strip it. Four seconds. We've got time, we've got time for one limp. Let's go. Yeah. RP, let me show you. <laughs> I'll cover your face up, babe. You don't have the camera. Let me show you what was on upstairs. Go, 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 go. I'm not filming your bum up the stairs either, honest. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. So we know that I, that I made a nice little doorstep. Did all the oak floor upstairs all the way through. All through all the rooms. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Still got this threshold. I put all the walk-in wardrobe in. <laughs> it looks awesome. So it's all in. Good Whoop. work. All the uh, shoes are in. Stop it. And all in here is done. Uh, amazing. What came over you? Bonus man points <laughs> today. Um, what came over me? It needs to be done and I was sick of not knowing where my clothes were. So yeah. nice. <laughs> and I was just sick of putting up with your uh, mess. <laughs> She's super tidy, I'm messy. Um, I showed everyone the state of the kitchen this morning. I said Rose gonna hate me for this, but it was my fault in fairness. So on that note, guys, I'm gonna go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. I hope the calorie stuff we talked about really helped you. Hoped you enjoyed seeing me get crushed by 150, 40 kilos under a bar, then 100 kilos repetitively on cleans. Um, if you have any questions, uh, any opinions, put them in the comment box below and I'll reply to all if I can. Uh, and we'll see you Sunday for our next video in our series, which is like our education series. And our next one is gonna be protein. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.